Stick your head into the world's largest flower. What does it feel like? Hum, it must smell terrible. This is the Rafflesia, which is depicted on the ten-ringed note in Malaysia. At the same time, it is also the largest flower in the world. The Rafflesia is located deep within the tropical rainforest of Malaysia. You need to take local transportation to get there. It's a great opportunity to experience the tropical rainforest here. What are the differences compared to our country? What blocks the sky and sun may not necessarily be a big tree. It could also be a type of fern. Beneath the lush green moss. There could also be a party of giant mosquitoes. One of 18 quirks of Malaysia. A single fern makes a dish. There is nothing but two ferns. Can't solve. In the depths of a secluded forest. Unique flowers bloom in solitude. We haven't gone far. We saw a Rafflesia blooming. The first sight of it felt surreal. It has no leaves and no roots. It looks as if it has been placed here by someone. But this is actually an important characteristic of parasitic plants. This is a Rafflesia bud that is currently growing. It embeds its roots deep into the host plant's subcutaneous tissue. At the same time, it has no leaves. It also does not need to perform photosynthesis. It simply extracts nutrients from the host plant using its roots. That's enough for its growth. So, if we could actually see its roots or stems, it would indeed become unreal. This bud will bloom in about six or seven days. Doesn't its current shape resemble a large cabbage? The Rafflesia is a parasitic plant of the Rafflesiaceae family. It often parasitizes plants of the Vitaceae family. Specifically, the roots of Tetrastigma are related plants. When it blooms, it emits a smell similar to that of decaying animals. This attracts blowflies. Flesh flies and other carrion insects help with its pollination. But I prefer to see it with my own eyes. Everyone, pay attention. Those tiny ones inside. They are neither blowflies nor flesh flies. They are fruit flies. So, the smell it emits, resembling that of decaying animals. Must also contain the scent of rotting plant fruits. The blooming period of the Rafflesia does not have a specific time limit. Generally, it can be seen from February to October. However, their propagation process is exceptionally difficult. First, during the time when they bloom together. The ratio of female flowers to male flowers reaches an astonishing 20 to 1. Yet, the blooming period lasts only about 37 days. Therefore, many female flowers may not have enough time to be pollinated. It has already dried up. After the fruit matures, it must also be eaten by animals. For example, tree shrews and similar creatures. Then, they will deposit their feces at specific spots. On the roots of the host plants. Only then can its seeds grow. Such harsh growing conditions have led to their current status of being extremely endangered. Just like how we discovered this parasitic flower in Chishwangbana in the past two years, which was previously recorded as extinct. Alas, it was rediscovered later. We recorded it again. The Rafflesia in the rainforest is not found in just this one place. In fact, they are all over the mountains. But when the flowers bloom, requires local guides to take us to find them. Therefore, in the Malaysian rainforest, the joys that can be experienced are not limited to just the Rafflesia. This time, it is our company's colleagues together, from Yunnan Senye Biotechnology Company, Limited, on the journey to collect samples in Malaysia. Later, we will summarize the trip, to give everyone a general understanding of traveling to Malaysia. The scent of patchouli is quite similar to that of medicated oil. The artist's conch grows everywhere. In fact, in the rainforests of Chishwangbana, it is also quite common. But what is special about this? Pay attention, everyone. It grows horizontally. Oh, I've never seen this before. This thick vine, is the host plant for the Rafflesia. We follow the vine to look for the roots. We can find the bud of the Rafflesia. The emerald green snail is not just an adjective. It really looks similar to emeralds. But I am more interested in this big tree. Everyone, guess how tall it is. An ant castle. This is really on the surface. They have built a sand dune fortress directly. But at the entrance of this castle, it is all spider silk. Ah, these spiders are blocking their holes. Waiting for a hair by the stump. Wild beetle nut can actually grow so beautifully. But it doesn't feel like much from this angle. We need to get a little closer. And then use the correct way to open it. In such a pristine forest, a few leeches should be considered normal, right? Another representative phenomenon is, in the ditches of this forest, there are countless water pipes densely packed. In a place with such abundant rainfall, do we really need to connect so many water pipes? This is because the rainfall is too abundant. Therefore, crops cannot be planted directly in the ground. It is necessary to build greenhouses and divert water from the mountains for irrigation. To be honest, this really challenges my understanding. But it seems to make sense in a way. Look, this kingfisher isn't afraid of people. And it's quite different from the kingfishers in our country. Plus, their beak is red. This fungus is parasitic. It's even more intense than what I've seen. Not only does it grow so robustly, but it also blooms flowers. Next to it, I found a giant millipede. I wonder if it will spray poison. I also saw the legendary Draco giving birth. This is very hard to encounter. And it was during its birthing process. During this process, it won't run away. It waits until after giving birth to move. Our Malaysian friends also want to try training leeches. What kind of fruit is this? It looks a bit like a giant waxberry. And it has been nibbled on a bit. Uh, this might need to be experienced in person. 
You all notice this area is relatively bright. The other places are all dark. Sigh, what could this phenomenon be? This looks like a small mound formed by ants. But inside, it actually houses a cicada. This is what we commonly refer to as the cicada. In a high humidity environment, allowing the leaves to grow moss. This tree has been cut several times by someone, and the sap that flows out is bright red. It looks like it's bleeding. Along the way, we also saw many Rafflesia flowers. Some of them had already bloomed, but most were still in bud form. The entire track down felt very tiring, but we also saw many fascinating things. Many places sacrifice ecology for economic development, and then move to areas with better ecology. In fact, green mountains and clear waters are also a form of wealth. As long as our domestic ecology is good, they will come here to travel.